Hi, I'm Jeff. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to take this board, which I've just taken off my jointer, and turn it into this board, which is ready for use in fine furniture making. I hope you find it interesting. So what distinguishes this rough board from this board that is ready for fine furniture making. What I'm trying to achieve with this board, the rough board, is I want to get rid of any bumps. So it is flat, cross from side to side here, and also flat from end to end. How do I do this? What I'm trying to do is introduce a very small hollow. Firstly, along its width from here to here. And the reason I want that is so that this edge here and this edge here sit flat on the bench. I'm then going to do the same thing lengthways. And that's so that the end pieces are flat. And when I'm talking about a microscopic hollow, I'm talking well, less than a tenth of a millimetre or a few thousandths of an inch. You can't even see it in normal viewing. But if you put a ruler across, hold it up to a bright light, you can see the little hollow and it's just a little glow, and that's what I'm looking for. So let's get started on that. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare the face side, which is this side. And all I'm going to do is use my hand plane to take off the milling marks. I'm not going to worry about making it flat just yet. It's a simple matter of getting the plane, I'm just traversing the board until all the milling marks are gone. And as you're doing this, you'll see that the board starts to shine on all the bits that you've hand planed. And any bits that you haven't yet done will be dull. And there will also be a momentary drop in the planing sounds. Because of what it means is that those bits are deeper than the rest of the board around it. A bit more here. And you just go until you're happy with the finish. That's it. No, missed a little bit. Way to find out 
is if you can't feel it, so hold it up to the light. And I've still just got a little bit just on here that just does not want to come out. We're not far. And that's it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hollow the length. What that means is that we're going to put a small hollow along here. By small, I mean less than a tenth of a millimetre, a few thousandths of an inch in the old terms. And the way to do that is we start fractionally in and then lift off before the end. And so we get a flat bit here, a little bit of a hollow, and a flat bit there. And the way we check it is we get our steel rule, go along the length, and we look up at the light at a light source. And there should just be a little bit of a glow underneath. The other one is to put rule on the board like this and flex it. And you can feel where it catches. Right. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, in this board itself, it's mostly already hollowed. So I don't need to do too much. So what we do is we start about a few mil in from the end, plain like before, and then when we get to the end, we just lift off. We just do that across the whole board. Like that. Now what we're going to do is just check the hollow along the length. Again, just put the ruler on the top like so. Hold it up to the light. And yes, I have it hollowed. Perhaps a little bit more than I want. Hang on. This bit has a high spot in the big one. So there's a high spot here on this side, which we need to take. Continue the process. And we check each time we get it right. Okay. That's better. Now, once we've got hollow along the whole length, we use one final through shaving just to clean up the high spots at the end. And in the middle, it will just follow that contour we've already put in, so it's not a problem. One set. So the next step is to place a hollow across the board. We use our rule to check that. And I forgot to mention why we're doing this. The reason that we're doing this, apart from having services which we can use for our marking out, is that we want the board to sit flat on the bench. And we want it to sit on this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. We don't want any bumps. So I've put a little hollow in there. So in order to check across the grain, we just hold it up to the light like we've been doing, sight down it with our rule to get rid of the bumps. All right, so this one is not is mostly there. So what we'll do is we take passes across this section of the board. 
We leave edges alone. And we go full length. Check again, let's rule out, and that now is perfect. Well, oh, not quite, a little bit down at this end. Final shake again. Yes, 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 yes. And then we just do full set of clean up shake. Like so. So now this board. Is hollow along its grid and along its grid. Now, the next thing we're going to do is remove any wind or twist. That's done using winding sticks. They come in a pair. One has no embellishments, and the other has two white strips in it. And the purpose of those strips is to show when one side is higher than the other. So if we put them together, and the board is flat, none of the white strips should be showing. But if for sake of argument, the back right corner is twisted up. One is this will show that like this. When we slide over the edges, you'll see that white at this end is higher than the white at the other end. And that's how we know. And the way that the sticks actually show it is that it, one, it exaggerates it, but two, it shows opposite corners. So we know that the back right corner and the front left corner are high. So how do we use them? We put them down on the board, like so. We come to the end, we simply just sight down them. Okay, and in this case, what I'm seeing is that I'm high on this corner which means I'm also high on that corner. Not by a lot, but that's what it is. And what we do to fix that is we just plane on the diagonal. So we go corner to corner, and one either side, like so. Put the winding sticks back on again. And we check again. Okay, and that's fixed the problem. So now they are flat. And finally, we just put a single three pass to finish the clean up. And that is done. So our face side is now ready for use. What I want to do now is mark that reference side so we know which one it is. So just looking at the grain, 
I'm going to use this as my reference for my face edge. So I do just a simple mark like that in chalk because it comes off easily, showing that this is the face side and it points to the face edge, or in this case, what will be the face edge. So now we're going to prepare the face edge. We just use the same process. Step one, remove any machine marks. You can hear there's a few because you can hear it cutting and then stopping. That's got it. Just going to make sure the length is hollow by taking a few hollowing shavings. As usual, we check with the rule. And that's got it. And one clean up shaving. What we do, we need to check the squareness of the edge to the face using my crisp Vespa square. Look up the line and sight down it. And in this case, I didn't do such a good job of holding the plane square. And so what I've got is, it looks like that, which is easy to fix. What I do is I take off a few shavings along this edge and progressively move across the board until I get it flat. Let me check again. Okay, still like that, but it's only just. So we do it again. Check again. And each time I do it, it's getting closer and closer to square. Now, you don't want to rush these because these are your primary reference surfaces. And if you mess them up, nothing will be square to each other. And it'll make it so much harder for you to build furniture. Right, and I think I've got to do that one more time and then we'll be good. Perfect. And I'll check. Wonderful. Fact. In fact, it's actually probably a little bit too high. 
So what we do is we just short pay it, shaving at that end. And like that end. And then break through. Exactly what I want. Yeah, exactly what I want. Now, all I do is mark on it a small mark. In my case, I use an arrow just to say that that's the face edge. So, that's how you prepare a face side and a face edge from a rough board that has been taken from your jointer. It's worth noting though that the face edge and the face side are not the ones that you want showing. So in that, so that is why the grain pattern on this side is much more striking than on this side. Because I want this to be showing on the outside of the gaming table that I'm making. So with simple tools and a little bit of patience, you can do this. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, consider giving us a like, and if you didn't, a dislike. Either way, please leave us a comment. If you have any other comments or topic suggestions, please leave a comment below as well. I invite you to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you stay up to date with my videos. Thank you for watching.